This is remarkable. C'est excellent. We're here in the heart of Paris today for something that could be extremely promising, at least interesting. I'm going to taste some lab-grown foie gras. So foie gras is that delicacy made out of uh, goose and duck livers. And um, the way uh, these poor animals are fed uh, is not really palatable. It's of course a tradition, or, and actually I'm from the place where there's this tradition, southwest of France, and this is why I'm absolutely interested, because actually I love foie gras. So hopefully this lap wrong thing is going to do the trick. Here it is. And it does look like the genuine stuff. I've seen this. So normally it's um, actually the raw foie gras that has been uh, panned. And, and the smell, and that's too bad, you can't smell it. It smells exactly what it should smell, um, at least the way I recall it. And, and the texture as well. Ooh, it's very delicate, as it should be. Now let me, let me try it, just like that, first hand. This is remarkable. This, this is this is remarkable. This is exactly, exactly what the normal stuff. Let me tell you, the genuine stuff tastes like. It's really, really good. On top of it, it's delicate. It's fine. It's soft. And it's good. So I'm with um, Nicolas Morin-Forest, he's the founder of Gourmet with the Y and uh, Gourmet is actually the company that is producing this lab grown foie gras and I have a why question actually, Nicolas, why? Why are you doing this? So meat is at the, at the core of our cultures and we really can no longer ignore the, the impact that intensive farming has on the environment from deforestation to antibiotic resistance or climate emissions. And we believe there's a way to keep enjoying the food we love, the meat we love, while still being a lot kinder or easier on, on the planet. So that's really at the core of Romeo of what we're doing. This one has to be put on there. Just a bread. It is seriously extremely difficult for me to tell you that this is lab grown and not made from an actual dirt liver. This is really good. So we are mostly looking at the US or Asia as our first obvious market. We know that for instance in California or in New York, Faga has been banned. It's actually illegal to consume Faga in California and it will soon be in New York. So these are obvious first market because we want to empower chefs to keep working with a product they love. Um, but then again, we have broad ambitions, global ambitions, and obviously depending also on the regulatory environment, we'll be able to deliver our product to European consumers as well. Are you a gourmet yourself? I think so. We are all foodies and we all love, we all love food, yeah.